Welcome to the Survivor to Thriver show with your happiness expert, Samia Bano. Do you feel stuck, silent, and stressed? Is something hurting your heart and soul? Are you burning yourself out? If so, you are in the right place because this is the podcast. People from all over the world join in to learn exactly how to stop suffering and start living with inner peace and joy. Let's get started. Hey, today I want to spend some time talking with you about the concepts, the ideas of empathy and compassion in terms of defining them and really uh, digging into 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 a deeper understanding of what is empathy, what is compassion, how do we develop greater empathy and compassion, how do the two relate to each other and help us uh, you know accomplish this really, really important goal that we we share, you and I share of transforming our lives from from being just survivors to thrivers and the goal that we have you and I of stop suffering and living with more inner peace and joy in our lives I realized that wow I've been talking a lot about empathy and compassion about applying empathy and compassion and I've not defined these concepts. I've not really um, dug deep into what what they are in and of themselves. And it's actually really, really important because, you know, I remember for myself, I used to be pretty confused, actually, about what empathy and compassion were, how they were different from each other. And when you are confused in your concepts, it's hard to properly apply them, isn't it? Now, the other reason that it occurred to me that I really need to talk about this differentiation, especially between empathy and compassion, is that I've been noticing more and more that actually there this is a pretty common challenge that people either have a particular strength in, in being able to, ha- uh, to practice uh, good empathy, but they're sort of lacking in compassion, or that they have actually lots of compassion, but they're lacking in empathy. And Really, we, we need to have both empathy and compassion. And when you're lacking one or the other, it can create certain problems and leave you really struggling to help yourself or help your loved ones deal with conflict, um, you know, uh, and, or if you, you know, we've been talking so much about forgiveness and issues related to forgiveness in the past few weeks that and, and empathy and compassion are, are such key components to what allows us to be forgiving whether it's towards ourselves or others that it's absolutely critical that we have a clear understanding of these concepts the difference between them and just how we can really practice these these uh, concepts uh, and develop them more deeply in our in our lives for example I me myself when I was uh, younger actually had quite a struggle in that I actually over time developed pretty good empathy skills but I would say even to this day I'm much more challenged to be compassionate and it's 
a little bit uh, like when I share this with people, people are oftentimes surprised because、um, one of the most consistent feedbacks that I get from people. About myself is that they they find me to be very compassionate, but actually, I am much 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 better at empathy, and usually I'm actually expressing that empathy, but people tend to interpret that as as my compassion. Now, of course. Uh, let me explain to you. For,、uh, let me first give you the definitions that I have for empathy and compassion.、Uh, now they may not match exactly with the dictionary, but that's why I'm defining them for you, right? This is how I understand the difference between between these two concepts, and it's really, really important difference. So for me, empathy. Is the skill of being able to see things from another person's perspective. Empathy is the skill of being able to see things from another person's perspective. So it's、uh, the idea that you know you you take a walk. In someone else's shoes, to experience the、uh, the the way that they are experiencing life, the way that they are thinking, feeling, acting, you want to try and and experience things as they do. That's empathy. Compassion, in contrast, is. Almost like an exercise in imagining, imagining how I would feel if I was in someone else's situation. Now, notice there's a difference. For a long time, I did not appreciate this difference. Empathy, like I said, it's like I try to understand things from. Your perspective, right? If I'm practicing empathy towards you, I will try to understand things from your perspective. But compassion is about me trying to think about how I would think, feel, or act if I were in your situation. The way that you are acting and thinking and feeling in the situation that you are in. May be very different from how I think and feel and act in a given situation, or it, at at the very least, it may be very different from how I imagine I would think and feel and act in a given situation. For example. As human beings, we have all experienced loss in our lives. Even as little babies, you know, we can experience a sense of loss. As a little baby, we may not be able to articulate what we are experiencing and feeling, but we can certainly experience a sense of loss. So we all know what that feels like, and we all have a sense of when I lose something that I love, or when I lose someone that I love, how I respond to that, how I react to that. Now, if you begin to compare your own reaction to loss with that of others, you will see that there are certain things. That we share in common with other people. For example, when we experience loss, it is very common and a very natural reaction for us to experience a sense of grief, sense of sadness.
But there are other ways in which our reactions can be very different from each other. Some people experience loss, let's say the loss of a loved one, and it completely shatters them. Other people experience loss, they lose someone they love, and it can actually strengthen them. See, both people could be experiencing sadness and grief, but one person can shatter in the experience of, of that sadness and grief, while the other can become more strengthened by that experience of loss and grief. And everything in between. And maybe even a little of both. Right? And so why? Why do we react differently? Well, because we're different people, right? I mean, there are certain similarities that we all share just because we're human. But it's part of the human condition that we also have differences from each other. We are diverse people. We have different strengths, different weaknesses, different experiences. So we will tend to react and respond in a, in a different way from, from each other. So when we have compassion with other people, it helps us to appreciate the similarities that we share with other people. And it helps us to connect with other people at the level of those similarities. It helps us to deepen our sense of oneness, of connection with another person. So really our, our compassion emerges from our experience of oneness with another. To the extent that you feel one with another, you are going to be able to experience compassion for that other. Right? So remember, compassion emerging from that sense of oneness allows us to connect at the level of our similarities because of our similarities. But empathy is about appreciating differences. It's about being able to appreciate differences. It's, it's actually the skill that allows us to appreciate what is different between us. Appreciate the difference, right? When we appreciate the difference, doesn't mean, you know, it's like, um, now I'm going to become like you or you're going to become like me just because I experience a sense of empathy with you. No. We don't need sameness in order to have empathy. That's why we don't need agreement to have empathy, Agreement in terms of ideas and perspectives and interpretations. We don't need that to have empathy. In fact, the essence of empathy, the real benefit of practicing empathy is that it allows us to appreciate the differences that exist between us. If not appreciate, at the very least, understand the differences that exist between us. And we need both, right? Can you see why we need both? Let me give you an example. So let's say we, you have lost someone. And let's say I've lost someone. And so I think from a place of compassion towards you. 
And so I think, oh, when I lost the person that I loved, it made me feel really sad. And I felt alone. And one thing that really helped me when I felt sad and alone was being around other people. Just like surrounding myself with other people that I love and care about, and who love and care about me, and just allowing that uh, that extra support uh, and and love to be present in my life, and that really helps me to feel less alone and deal with my grief and my sadness. And I think about you, and I think. Oh, you have lost someone that you loved, so you're probably fa- feeling sad and aggrieved. So I think, well, maybe what you would like in this situation is also to have some extra love and support and to be around other people more than you might normally want to be so that you don't feel so alone. And so I might make some extra efforts to stay present with you and maybe even invite other people to come and hang out around you, with you, so that you don't have to suffer with that sense of loneliness, loss. Very, very well-intentioned gesture, if I make such a gesture. So that, and that's coming from a place of compassion. It's really nice, isn't it? But now imagine, if all I have is compassion, but I'm lacking empathy, I may not realize that this very thoughtful, good intentioned effort that I'm making is actually not helping you. It's actually maybe hindering your healing process. Because unlike me, you are a person who, when you're experiencing a sense of loss, grief because of that loss, it works out better for you if you can be on your own have some time and space to be with yourself so you can process things uh, uh, you know, in that space and time on your own. Like maybe the way that you prefer to process through your uh, thoughts and feelings is not by talking or listening to other people, but by writing. And, and to be able to really write, you need to, you need to be on your own. But here I am surrounding you with all these, these, these people, making sure that you're never being left alone. And so I'm like inadvertently acting in a way that's actually hindering your healing process because you need, you need to be alone. Why is that happening? Because I have lots of compassion for you, but I'm lacking in, in empathy. I don't really understand things from your perspective. So you can run into trouble like that, okay? When you don't understand the difference between empathy and compassion. And because you don't understand the difference, you don't strive to... Make sure that you are practicing both empathy and compassion. Now the other thing can also happen. Where you have lots of empathy, but you don't have enough compassion. And that can create its own challenges. But I'm looking at the time, so what we're going to do is I'm going to wrap up right here for today. And to, in our next episode, we will pick up on what can happen when you have empathy but not compassion. 
what that can look like and what challenges that can present. And then, of course, we're going to talk about solutions also. We always talk about solutions. So, hey, if this is something that you find yourself struggling with, please don't continue to struggle with it on your own. Reach out for help and support. And you know that I'm one person that you can reach out to. Just go to my website at www.academyofthriving.com. Click on the Contact Us page and you'll see how you can connect with me. So until we connect next time, I wish you lots of peace and joy.